Hello and welcome to the Main Story Gallery. We will be drawing our attention to this art piece over here called The Entry of Christ into Jerusalem. It is painted by Sir Anthony Van Dyck and he was known to be one of the most prominent Flemish Baroque painters of his time. Not only was he known for painting scenes of biblical times and history scenes, he was also maybe even more well known for painting portraits. So if later on, as we discuss the characters, you'll notice his detail in the faces as well. This painting was painted in 1617 when he was only 18 years old. Um, he was under the apprenticeship of another very well-known Baroque Flemish artist by the name of Peter Paul Rubens. And it was with him that he helped develop his style. And during that time, it was well practiced and well known that famous artists that owned workshops would have many apprentices and assistants under them that would help them complete their projects and commissioned works. Uh, and Paul Rubens was one of those painters. So just a quick history fact, if you see um, painters in that time sign their pieces, it does not always mean that they painted the entire piece. Many cases, it was their assistants that did a lot of the work and depending on the contract, the main artists would do like the faces or the main characters while the assistants would do the background. However, this piece Van Dyck did entirely by himself. And so we can give him all the credit for this piece. It is oil on canvas and in real life, it is approximately five feet by eight feet. It currently hangs in the Indianapolis Museum of Art. This is portraying the story in the Bible that is written in John of Jesus entering Jerusalem and how he is caught up in a crowd of Jews that are shouting joyfully as he enters into the city. They are lying down their cloaks um, and palm branches. I am going to be drawing our attention to different characters. The first one is almost hidden. He is in the shadows. We can only really see him by the light that hits his head. But if we really focus, we can see a figure that is hidden in the shadows, hidden in the darkness. And although he is hidden in darkness, he is still acting in obedience and lying down his cloak before Jesus humbly accepting his entrance into Jerusalem. The next character that we can draw our attention to is this man over here. This is Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus. And if we look at his face, it's easy to tell that he is distraught or concerned or fearful. And he is letting fear guide him, fear lead him, instead of accepting Jesus as being in his presence and letting Jesus um, have peace over him. Uh, and this was very common for Peter. Peter would often speak before he thought and get himself into trouble. And here he is pointing to Jerusalem with worry, with fear, because he knows that the Jewish leaders of that time were not very happy with Jesus. And he was worried of what could happen to Jesus. And Jesus is raising his hand uh, almost to silence his fear letting Peter know that everything is under control. As we draw our attention to Jesus, he is wrapped in different colored robes. The first color is blue, a deep royal blue, and the second is red. Each color has its own meaning. The first color blue um, is representative of divinity or heaven, and red is humanity. And it is said that Christ is divinity wrapped in humanity. Not only is this um, representative of his character, but the way he is sitting on the donkey, he is sitting side saddled, which represents humility and poverty. And when we think about it, Jesus is said to be the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That's why the crowd is praising him and joining him and uh, leading him into town with singing. Yet he decides to come on a lowly donkey not on a white horse with chariots 
and loud music. And not only that, it's the, his posture that he's sitting. He's sitting side saddled instead of front saddled. And that tells us a lot about the mode of Jesus and his character as he enters the town. Uh, the people behind him are said to be people of the crowd or his disciples, and they are lost in conversation. Uh, scholars believe that they might have been talking about who was the greatest of them, who would be sitting on the right or left hand side of Jesus. And although they knew that they were chosen by Christ individually, for some reason they still felt like they had to debate that. Finally, the figure that might be the most striking, in my opinion, is this man who has the light hitting his back, crouched over, looking up at Christ. He is not holding a palm branch like the rest of the crowd, but he ha is holding a branch that has been identified as a poppy branch, which signifies death. And he is this symbol of a man who is imperfect, a man who is carrying death alongside him. He is even walking alongside the donkey's hooves, which means that death is coming soon or quickly. And if we look closely at his other foot, he actually has an extra toe, a sixth toe between the big toe and the index toe. And that is um, significant because the number six means imperfection or humanism. And it could signify that Jesus will die a human or imperfect death for our sins. And so if we kind of circle back through all the characters here and give our, cha our a chance for us to kind of ponder and think about who here resonates with me, who here speaks to me personally. This man in the shadows, although he is surrounded by darkness, he is still obedient. He is still humbly coming before Jesus and laying down his cloak before him. Peter, although he wants to be a righteous man, he wants to be a faithful man, he is just overwhelmed with fear. He's letting fear guide his life instead of letting the peace of Christ surround him. The apostles in the back, although they know that they are chosen by Christ, that they are part of his kingdom, they still have pride and reasons to argue who is the greatest of them. And this man here, he recognizes his imperfections. He knows where he is wrong. He knows that he will die one day and that his only way of salvation is through Christ. Christ is the only one in this picture who knows his fate. He knows what's waiting for him in Jerusalem, the cross, death, but he is the only one here that is sitting calmly and peacefully and just fulfilling the prophecy, fulfilling what needs to be done for us to be sanctified like this man and letting our sins be washed away.